quadratics completing the square when the coefficient of x squared is not equal to 1. Completing the square for 3x squared plus 6x, the coefficient of x squared must be equal to 1 before you complete the square. So there is one initial step before you start completing the square. And in that step, we do some factorising. So I'm going to take the 3 and put it outside the brackets. So inside, I have x squared. So 3 times x squared gives 3x squared. And 3 times 2x gives 6x. Now complete the square for these two terms. So we have x, and half the coefficient here is 1. So x plus 1 squared minus, and that term there, squared, will give you 1. Now we know the whole thing is multiplied by 3, so I should put 3 on the outside, square brackets here, so everything on the inside here is multiplied by 3. And then I'm going to multiply out these square brackets. So 3 multiplies here. And here. And that gives 3 brackets x plus 1 squared. Minus, and 3 times the minus 1 gives you minus 3. So this is what you do when the coefficient of x squared is not equal to 1. So I've essentially divided both of these terms by 3 to give these two terms here. And that 3 that I've divided by both of these two I'm multiplying by that 3 on the outside. So at this stage here, this expression and this expression are the same because you have 3x squared and 3 times 2x gives you 6x. So how would this method differ if there was a 3 term quadratic to begin with? So let's say if we had a plus 5 on the end. Well, we're not going to do anything with that constant until the very last step here. Okay, so keep your focus on the squared term and the x term and that constant for each step, we're just bringing that constant down like this. And then in the very final step, when you simplify the minus 3 plus the 5 to give you 2. This is when you bring that constant in to the rest of the uh, working out there. Completing the square for 4x squared minus 12x minus 1. Again, the coefficient of x squared is not 1. So I'm going to start off by taking that 4 out. So I'm dividing this term by 4 and this term by 4. Ignore the minus 1 for the time being. Okay, so I need x squared here. And 4 times minus... 3x will give you minus 12x. So I've divided both of these by 4 to get these two. And I've multiplied on the outside by 4. That minus 1, we're just carrying along and we'll incorporate it into the solution at the end. Okay, so right now we have a coefficient of x squared which is equal to 1. So the number in front of the x squared now is 1. Completing the square for just the x squared term and the x term, so ignore everything else, just keep your focus on these terms. So brackets, x, we need half the coefficient of this term here, that's minus 3, so half of that will be minus 3 over 2 like this. So all of that squared 
and there's always a minus here, and then take this term, the minus 3 over 2, and square it to give 9 over 4. Be careful with that sign there, it's a minus. And we know that everything here comes from here, and this is all multiplied by 4. Like this. And then that minus 1, we're just carrying along. And then multiply out the square brackets. So that 4 needs to multiply here. And it multiplies with this minus 9 over 4 here. So we have 4 brackets x minus 3 over 2 squared, multiplying the 4 with 9 over 4, this 4 and this 4, because that 4 is in the denominator, will cancel, so that will give minus 9, and there's the constant that we're just carrying along, and then in the final step, if we simplify these two constants, so we have 4 brackets x minus 3 over 2 squared minus 10. In this example, I have on purpose missed out the first few steps. So how we got to here, I've left out. Uh, the focus here is what do you do if you have fractions everywhere? So at this stage, you would be multiplying out the square bracket, so that 3 multiplies here, and it multiplies this minus 9 over 4 here. So this part here that multiplies with the 3 is simple, so that's 3 brackets x minus 3 over 2 brackets squared, and as you can see, that 3 does not affect any of the terms inside the brackets, it just multiplies on the outside, like this. Now we need to multiply 3 with minus 9 over 4. Now when you multiply a whole number with a fraction, I know the answer here will be negative, I'll put the minus in afterwards, but a whole number multiplying with a fraction, the whole number only multiplies the numerator. So 3 times 9, 27 over same denominator, 4. So this will be minus 27 over 4. And then you have the minus 2 that we're just carrying along like this. Now how do you simplify the constants here? Because you have a fraction and you have a whole number. Now to do this you ideally want to write your whole number here as a fraction with this denominator 4. So I'm looking for something like this. So what divided by 4 will give you 2? Well, 8 divided by 4 gives you 2. So that minus 2 and this minus 8 over 4 are the same. And because we have two fractions here now with the same denominators, we can very easily simplify these. So minus 27 minus 8 gives you minus 35 over 4. Completing the square is useful for curve sketching. If you have a u-shaped curve, then com this, this completed square form is very useful in uh, working out the coordinates for the vertex here, or if the curve was n-shaped, the vertex is here. So working out the coordinates for the vertex is simple once you have the completed square form. And also working out the equation for the line of symmetry, which is just a vertical line going through the vertex, is also simple. In this example, y equals x minus 2 squared plus 5, the vertex will have the following coordinates. Okay, start off with the brackets. So inside the brackets we have x minus 2, 
make that equal to 0, and then work out what x is equal to. So x equals 2. This is the x coordinate for the vertex. When x is equal to 2, this is all 0. 2 minus 2 is 0, and that squared gives you 0. That leaves y is equal to 5. So y is equal to 5 is the y coordinate for the vertex. So from here we've worked out that the vertex has coordinates 2, 5. So let's say that's x is equal to 2, and this is x is equal to 5. So the vertex is here. Now, if you expanded the brackets here, the coefficient of x squared is positive. So this will be a u-shaped curve. So our curve will be something like this. So we have the coordinates for the vertex. Now we just need the y-intercept here. To work out the y-intercept, anywhere along the y-axis, the x-coordinate is 0 for any point on the y-axis, including this point here. Because x is equal to 0, if we substitute in x equals 0 into this, so then we've got y is equal to 0 minus 2 squared plus 5. Okay, so in this I'm using x is equal to 0. So then y is equal to, well, minus 2 squared is plus 4. Add the 5 gives you 9. This is the y-intercept here. The line of symmetry that goes through the vertex, the vertical line here, has the equation x is equal to 2. So x is equal to 2 is the equation for the line of symmetry. So we've used the completed square form to work out the coordinates for the vertex, and we've used it to work out the y-intercept and the equation of the line of symmetry. Now typically if your curve does not go through the x-axis, or it doesn't touch the x-axis, and you're doing a sketch, you will be asked to work out the coordinates for the vertex. And in this case, the completed square form is really useful. Sketching the curve for y is equal to x plus 3 squared minus 16. Let's start off with uh, the coordinates for the vertex. So focus on what's inside the brackets here. If this was to be equal to 0, so x plus 3 is equal to 0, then x is equal to minus 3. This is the x-coordinate for the vertex. When x is equal to minus 3, then this is all 0, and that leaves y is equal to minus 16. So that's the y-coordinate for the vertex. So the vertex has the coordinates minus 3, minus 16. To get the y-intercept, we're going to use x is equal to 0, x equals 0, because x equals 0 everywhere on the y-axis. So then y is equal to 0 plus 3 squared minus 16. 3 squared is 9, 9 minus 16 gives minus 7. So y is equal to minus 7. That's the y-intercept. If you were to multiply the brackets out here, the x squared term would have a positive coefficient, so this would be a u-shaped curve. So the vertex is at minus 3, minus 16. So the vertex is here and we have a u-shaped curve that will go through y equals minus 7. So this is the curve that we get. 
with the vertex at minus 3, minus 16, a y-intercept of minus 7. So what's missing now are the roots. So what's the x-coordinate here and the x-coordinate here where the curve goes through the x-axis? Now we know that anywhere on the x-axis the y-coordinate is always 0. So by using y is equal to 0 then our equation becomes 0 is equal to x plus 3 squared minus 16 Rearranging gives x plus 3 squared is equal to 16. Square rooting both sides, x plus 3 is equal to, and square root of 16 is plus or minus 4. So then x is equal to minus 3, so taking the 3 to the right hand side, plus or minus 4. So we have x is equal to minus 3 minus 4 and we have x is equal to minus 3 plus 4. So this has an x-coordinate of 1, and this has an x-coordinate of minus 7. So again, this example demonstrates how the completed square form for the equation of a curve can be very useful for working out roots, the y-intercept, and the coordinates for the vertex.